Hi, my name's Josh, and uh, mostly for my own study purposes, I decided to make a video summarizing the different methods and enzymatic pathways that enable vasodilation or arterial dilation. So the basic purpose is to understand that myosin is the target. And when myosin is bound to phosphate, that's active. Therefore, it's free to bound to actin, and you get contraction. If you can prevent the addition of phosphate, or if you can remove the phosphate from myosin, then you're going to get vasodilation or inactivation of the smooth muscle cell. So, let's start, let's start from the beginning. Basically, there are two different pathways. One involves two cells, the endothelial cell and the smooth muscle cell. And the other is basically involved just the, the, just the smooth muscle cell itself. If we start with the two-cell pathway, we first need to begin with different hormones and enzymes that can increase intracellular calcium. And those are acetylcholine, alpha-2 agonists, bradykinin, histamine, uh, serotonin, etc. And what all these things do is they activate the GQ pathway. And what that does is that increases intracellular calcium through the of course, the chain of events involving IP3 and protein kinase C, etc., etc. And the end result, of course, is the increase uh, SCR efflux of calcium into the cytoplasm, therefore increasing intracellular calcium. Now, what that does is that activates an enzyme called CNOS, or calcium-dependent NO synthase. And what that does is that, of course, synthesizes NO, or nitric oxide. So how does that work is that basically converts, when there's enough calcium, the conversion of L-arginine to both citrulline and NO. And that's why actually a lot of supplements, a lot of workout supplements, contain L-arginine. Because what that does is that facilitates the conversion um, of this, uh, of this um, amino acid to nitric oxide. So if we have enough calcium, we have the conversion of L-arginine to citrulline and NO, and then NO actually diffuses from the endothelial cell to the smooth muscle cell where it does its business. Now we can get NO through other ways as well. One is by taking nitrates, um, particularly for treatment of angina symptoms. A lot of people will pop nitrates under the tongue. And what that does is that increases venous dilation more than arterial dilation, and that, that actually traps a lot of the blood, uh, the blood volume in the venous system itself which actually prevents the kind of uh, downstream effect of, of preload by preventing uh, right atrial filling. In other words, if all the blood is trapped in the veins, it can't fill the right side of the heart. That decreases preload, that decreases oxygen demand, decreases the stress of the heart. Therefore, the symptoms of uh, ischemic heart disease are minimized. That's how nitrates work. So we can get nitrates through that way. We can get nitrates through the pathway we just talked about by the uh, endothelial cell diffusion. And we can also get nitrates by getting infected with some gram-negative bacteria, where the LPS, or the lipopolysaccharide, actually activates another uh, NO synthase called INOS that is in the smooth muscle cell itself. And that basically, again, increases um, intracellular concentration of NO in the smooth muscle cell. So what happens when the smooth muscle cell has enough NO? Well, what that does is it activates an enzyme called guanylocyclase. And what guanylocyclase does is that converts GTP to cyclic GMP. And cyclic GMP is what we're looking for, because what that does is that actually removes a phosphate from myosin. And if you remember, if we remove a phosphate from myosin, from myosin, we inactivate it. So how does that work? Well, cyclic GMP actually activates a myosin phosphatase. And a phosphatase, of course, just simply removes the, the phosphate from the myosin light chain. Now, we can also actually increase the concentration of cyclic GMP by Viagra, or a sildenafil. Now, what that does is that's a cyclic GMP phosphodiesterase, which actually, um, the enzyme, the phosphodiesterase, converts cyclic GMP back to GTP. And if we can prevent that breakdown, then we, of course, will increase the concentration of cyclic GMP and therefore be able to remove that phosphate from myosin. And that's what sildenafil does. It inhibits that phosphodiesterase, therefore increasing cyclic GMP concentration in the smooth muscle cell. So that's basically the first half. And what that does is all of those pathways in sum remove a phosphate from myosin, therefore causing vasodilation. The other way that we can cause vasodilation is by preventing the phosphate addition to myosin. And this, of course, has also two ways. 
The first is by having intracellular calcium present in the smooth muscle cell. If we have calcium present, that can bind to calmodulin. Calmodulin, in turn, can activate myosin light chain kinase. Now, if we add or if we activate myosin light chain kinase, what are we doing? We are facilitating the addition of phosphate to myosin. This, of course, will cause vasoconstriction or activation of the smooth muscle cell. We don't want this. So we got to prevent that. And we can do that by preventing the complexing of calmodulin with calcium. And we can do that by calcium channel blockers, of course. So an amphetamine or the uh, non-dihydramine uh, calcium channel blockers can prevent the influx of calcium into the smooth muscle cell, therefore preventing calmodulin activation, therefore preventing myosin light chain kinase activation, therefore preventing the phosphorylation of myosin. We can also inactivate myosin light chain kinase itself, and we can do that by phosphorylating it. And we do that, of course, by having some sort of enzyme present that is free to phosphate. And the go-to enzyme in this case is protein kinase A. And how do we activate protein kinase A? Of course, through activation of the GS pathway. And that, of course, if you recall, activates um, adenylocyclase, which activates protein kinase A. And there we have it. We have a, a method of activating uh, or phosphorylating the myosin light chain kinase. Now, what activates the GS pathway in smooth muscle cells. Well, we can have prostaglandins, we can have beta-2 agonists, a whole range of things. And what they do is they actually, by simulating the GS pathway, phosphorylate myosin light chain kinase. That actually inactivates myosin light chain kinase, therefore it can no longer phosphorylate myosin, therefore myosin can't bind to actin, and we have vasodilation. So I hope that helps just kind of in sum uh, a review of enzymatic pathways that either prevent the addition or facilitate the removal of phosphate from myosin which of course causes vasodilation. Thanks.